What's up guys? It's Mama Deadhead and I'm finally back with a video about The Walking Dead. Not about the show in general, but about an actor from the show as you can tell by the title. So those of you that are subscribed to me that don't follow me on social media, this might come as a complete shock because I don't think that I talked about this on my channel and my reactions that I was doing um, whenever I found out that I was going to be able to talk to Lenny James because I was so caught up in other stuff before I could really make this announcement and maybe this is a welcome surprise, I don't know. I've been talking about it a lot on social media, uh, specifically Twitter and Instagram. So uh, go follow me in those places if you want like, a closer look at my life or just want to see me ramble about The Walking Dead. So I got a chance to talk to Lenny James I won it from a charity contest. I'm not sure if I should say contest. I don't know. Maybe that is the right word. But it was all for charity. It was for Doctors Without Borders. And for every $5 that you donated, you got an entry. And there were 30 cast members that took part in this. And whenever you donated and, you know, showed that you donated, you put a name with your donation. So I put Lenny James with all of my posts about donating so that's who I was entered for and every cast member like got a winner so there was 30 winners which is amazing the actress who played Jadis on the show is the person that put all of this together with a friend and I believe her name is Selen I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing that right um but she posted about her saying she was a you know huge part of this so thank you to both of them she was so incredibly nice uh, during the emailing process and she was actually in on the call and talked just a little bit but she was like just there as a mediator but unfortunately I don't have any audio on the recording the day that I got to talk to him was pretty hectic I had a doctor's appointment earlier in the day and then when I got home it was about 30 minutes before the call was supposed to happen and like two streets down from me a semi had knocked down like a bunch of power lines because they tried to pull into a place that wasn't the right height for them. So everyone's okay, but it knocked out power for the majority of the day, which means when I got home, we had no power and it meant that my laptop wasn't working. So I couldn't record it in a way that could also have audio because on my phone, at least, you know, within the time that I figured this out and was trying to like scramble and figure something out, um, I don't have an app that will let me, like, also let another app use audio. Like, there's, there can be only one audio. So, Zoom took the audio and there's no audio on the call. I'm so sorry about that. I wanted to share at least some snippets of it. And maybe I'll put some up around of, um, what it was like. But, unfortunately... I'm so sorry. If you came here really wanting to see the video, I apologize. But I will tell you some things that we talked about. Another thing that I want to address, first off, I did not ask about season six of Fear of the Walking Dead. I, I didn't ask on purpose. I had some questions written down that I wanted to ask him, but I didn't ask about season six because we don't know if he is alive or dead. They've made it clear that like it can go either way. And I, even though it's looking kind of bad right now, I, I can't say like, oh, how do you feel about season six or like, what's your favorite, you know, plot point in season six? Because that means that he knows and is alive or doesn't know and he's dead, you know what I mean? So I, I didn't want to, to pry too much about that, but I did gain some insight on some other stuff. Um, with a special announcement for YouTube uh, coming at the end, the, the last thing. Actually, it's the first thing that we talked about because I really wanted to know, but I, I'm going to tell you guys at the very end because there is a special development that has happened today. So, of course, I told him that you guys love him dearly. He has a huge fan base online. And we all love Morgan and Lenny just to the moon and back. And don't worry, I let him know that he is very loved. That was the one thing on social media. People were like, please tell him that we love him. And I did. Trust me, I did. I told him that he is amazing. He's an inspiration. And that he's just the most wonderful person ever. I made sure... To let him know that all of you guys really genuinely adore him and so do I. Joked about a Jericho reboot. Um, 
probably not gonna happen. I wish, no, that wasn't a serious thing. It was just something that I joked about. I would love a Jericho reboot. I freaking love Jericho. Jericho is like the one show that I'm obsessed with that I wish uh, had not been canceled. It was only on for two seasons. If you have not seen Jericho, turn off my video and go watch Jericho. What are you doing with your life? You need to watch Jericho. It's amazing. Um, <laughs> I asked him what his inspiration was and if he shared, if he think that, uh, thinks that he shared anything in common with Morgan. And he says that uh, he tries to keep uh, those very separate and that his inspiration um, there's a few if we're talking about like strictly, you know, just filming. I got the impression without going into like an incredible amount of detail that he is so incredibly grateful for what he has and the job that he has. Like that is what keeps him moving forward. It's just very like energizing and inspirational to him to just be a part of this which I thought was really nice and then of course family he said that you know they're always there for him he strives to do good for them they can also be his like toughest critic but they just like love and adore him and he loves and adores them so I thought that that was just the cutest thing ever um one huge thing that I wanted to know about which probably was the greater portion of the call I asked what uh, his reaction was when he found out that Grace was pregnant all along. And he said that he actually knew for a while. He, I think he was one of the first people to know. Don't quote me on that. Um, but he was definitely around the beginning of people knowing about that. And he got to shape his relationship with Grace quite a bit. So it was all kind of like coming to a head in that season. He said that there, I think it was written in the script a time or two that they were, Athena went to the bathroom. Sorry guys. She was in the call of play too. <laughs> she, she, she wasn't like going to the bathroom, but she did fall and bump her head and come cry to me. So that happened during the call. You wanna say hi to the camera? You wanna say, come say hi? A bye. A bye. Bye. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> um, but yeah, I asked about that and it, oh, sorry. Lost my whole train of thought. ADHD. I apologize. Um, oh, I just lost it again. No, my train of thought. Uh, question mark. Question mark. ADHD in action. Someone help. 911. Yes, hello. We, uh, we talked about Grace, and he kind of got to ship in the script. There was a few times when Grace was supposed to just, like, openly flirt with Morgan, and, like, they have that kind of thing going on, but that was very much like, no, <laughs> Morgan doesn't flirt. So it was supposed to be basically how I took it. Like, the whole season, whenever they met and things were going down, they were kind of gravitating towards each other. I was like, no, no. And uh, some of the fan base were like, oh, cute. Like, we ship it. We love them. And I was kind of like, no, like, there's no way. And then I think it's in 210 words per minute when it just kind of, like, slaps you right in the face. Like, that's kind of what they were going for. That's how I took it. So, fantastic job. <laughs> I made sure that you knew that it was a pen. He did a fantastic, amazing job with that. Um, I, I got the impression that he adores Grace. And I got the impression that, I mean, he adores Morgan. He loves what he does. I, that's one point that I just wanted to tell you guys. Like, you can tell he is in love with this character. This character is important to him. The direction of this character is important to him. Like, everything that has gone down has been very important to Lenny. I got the impression that he loves Karen David. I got the impression that he just adores Grace. And I said at one point that Grace has to be, like, a very special character to pull what she did out of Morgan. And he absolutely agreed that she's a very special person. 
So that, I'm gonna cry. It just, it made me so happy to hear that, like, as much as I love, like, what is going on with, like, can't, well, not now, but, <laughs> um, I, I just got the impression that he loves it just as much as we do, if not more, because he is more part of the process. And then also about her pregnancy that they wanted to shape it to kind of be like, you know, what's going on with her? We know that she has radiation poisoning. Nobody is kind of an expert on like fandom wise, at least not that I've seen on like radiation poisoning. So like, is it radiation poisoning? We're not sure. But in hindsight, it's so obviously pregnancy. And I said the same thing. I was like, I was a lot like her. I would pass out. I was sickly a lot of the time. Like I just like <laughs> was not, you know, in like peak health when I was pregnant. I'm anemic too. So that's also one thing that I, I talked about or I thought and talked about to friends. I was like, is she anemic? And she's just like dehydrated. Is this what's going on? Because I, I kind of am like that too because there was sometimes when she was up and at him and ready and, you know, going places. And then there were some times when you thought she was really going to die. So, you know, that, that was a conversation too. And they, they wanted it to be like, in hindsight, oh, she's pregnant, obviously. And yeah, again, I feel that too. Now, that's kind of all I want to talk about in terms of like the, the show based questions. And I'm going to go into the last thing that I asked him and like the, the special new thing that, um, development <laughs> that has happened. And you will see more of it on social media. So if you want a close look, please go to social media. I asked Lenny James if he could think of a symbol or a quote that encompasses who Morgan is as a character. And he said he thought of two quotes. And the quotes are, all life is precious and just live. So it, that meant a lot to me because just live has meant a lot to me. And for him to kind of, to say both of those with All Life is Precious being like so huge a Morgan story, um, it meant a lot. And some of you know that I've been itching to get a new tattoo. And just live was a quote that I wanted in the tattoo. So the fact that he said that, um, it was also special for that reason that I already planned to get Just Live, but if he had said something else or said a symbol, I would have also incorporated that into the tattoo. Um, I got the tattoo today. <laughs> it takes up, like, all of my forearm, and I'm going to show it to you, but it's not only Morgan-related. It is also princess-related. Uh, I guess let me just go ahead and show you. So we have Princess's Spear, which hasn't exactly made an appearance on television. We've seen it in a commercial, but it looks, I mean, the same in the commercial than it does in the comics. So to get from the comics. And then Morgan's staff with the pointed end and, you know, the little swivel in the middle. And just live. And in the background, because I know, hold on. Eh, I don't know if that did it any justice. Um, but... There are lots of pinks and purples for Princess as well. So we have the staff and the quote for Morgan and the spear and the background for Princess. And you you can tell better in the pictures, but there are also like little twinkles. And down here, let me get that closer. Uh, this little watercolor splash is a heart. <laughs> so that was kind of why I waited <laughs> until today because I didn't want to make this video Monday and be like, I have something really cool to show you guys on Saturday. <laughs> I figured that I would just talk um, about all of it now. And uh, it was an amazing call. I, I still feel like I'm on cloud nine. He was incredibly nice. Like the first thing he did was ask about Athena because I had mentioned Athena in the email. I was like, is it okay if she's there? And absolutely yes and she got to say hi i might i might throw up some pictures but i do have some stuff on social media and the thumbnail is likely going to be a picture of like the video call 
Um, but he was so incredibly nice. He asked about Athena immediately. Uh, she called him Morgan, <laughs> of course. She's only four. She doesn't quite get it. Uh, he was all smiles with her. It, w it was super cute. She was so excited to see Morgan. She runs up and she's like, it's Morgan. <laughs> uh, and I told him about the little video on Twitter because uh, people wanted me to show him that. And I couldn't because I was on my phone. The power was out. I'm so sorry. I wish I could have. Um, but I told him about the little video where she could only say like five to ten words at the time. And she said Morgan on a live stream, and uh, he thought that was uh, super cute, too. Which, I'm just, I'm happy that it was okay to have Athena, because I know that for some people that might have been a bother, because she is four, she's very loud. <laughs> and she did, like, she was over here doing something and bumped her head and came crying to me, and she was like, ow, my head. And I gave her kisses, and she sat with me. And they were just so nice. Both of them were so nice. So thank you for every, to every single cast member that participated and everyone who put it together. Thank you guys so much for doing the Doctors Without Borders. We raised, as fans, over $20,000 for Doctors Without Borders, which is incredible. And congratulations to everybody that won. If you've already had your call, I hope it went amazing. I know that there's still a few people that haven't got their call yet. Um, but setting up a call for 30 different people, I mean, technically 60 different people, certainly not easy. Wasn't even easy having to go through all of that, uh, paperwork to find all the people and find all the names that, that had to be a lot. And to everyone that dedicated themselves to this, thank you, because it just, like, completed my world it was absolutely phenomenal i'm never gonna forget that experience like as long as i live i literally i've been to a few conventions you guys know obviously and i've been very nervous to meet people and in the moment i'm normally fine it's especially at a convention setting because you know there's people around you but when it's like a one-on-one -on -one call i could not feel my hands <laughs> for like 15 minutes before this call and i was just like I, I don't think I've ever told a person that I'm meeting that I was nervous, but like within the first minute, I was just like, I'm nervous. And he's like, it's okay. It's fine. But I was like, I was freaking out. When we got into the conversation a little bit, it was better. But um, he was so kind considering, you know, I was just like freaking out. But I'm so honored to have this tattoo. I was so honored to talk to him. You guys will obviously be seeing this on my social media and in all my videos and probably even more pictures because I love it and I'm so happy with it. And yeah, it says just live. So I can't wait to upload this so you guys can see it. Post about it on social media. So check me out, Mama Deadhead, on both Twitter and Instagram. And I'm going to post uh, a much more detailed picture for you guys so you can see everything that went into this tattoo. It took a long time. I think I was there from 12 to 5. So, somewhere around that. But in the picture, you can actually see, like, there's a design in the wood. There's, like, a design in all of the watercolor. It's phenomenal. It's literally phenomenal. There's so many colors, and it's just the most gorgeous thing I've ever seen. And it actually... Um, much like I have a, well, you can't see it. I have a tattoo on my leg that is of Michonne's sword and it says we're not too far gone. And that is kind of like my semicolon tattoo for those that don't know, it's like at some point in your life when you felt like you couldn't go on and then you did semicolon tattoo. That's like my interpretation of that. And I've been dealing with a lot of anxiety and this quote has helped and it also I can't show you them <laughs> because they're gone, but I do have, um, or did have self-harm scars on that ar arm, bleh, uh, on that arm. So that was a long time ago, like in my teens, but I wanted to take something that was painful at one time and replace it with beautiful art. And I couldn't think of a better way to do that than with something that was like my two favorite characters. I mean, we haven't had Princess much in the show, but Princess in the comics is everything and Princess in the show is already everything, but she doesn't have like even comic 
Princess doesn't have the like longevity that Morgan has had in my life. So it's not it's not quite the same, but they're both so incredibly important to me and I'm happy that I got to cover up scars with something like this. And I have one big one big I, I wish you guys could see it a little bit better, but I have oh, you kind of see my scars a little bit raised because I'm I swell so bad when I get tattoos. Um, but the bigger scar is right here and then I have some scars over here and they're all covered and it's gorgeous and I love it so thank you guys so much for watching this video I'm so sorry again that you know I wasn't able that day to have a laptop to actually you know record sound and everything genuinely apologize I at least planned on you know like I really wanted to show him the video and like show you guys his reaction to it but it just wasn't in the cards for me that day but Hope you guys are happy with the information that I did tell you. Sorry that no sneak peeks about season six. He said he hopes that I enjoy season six, but that's kind of all the season six talk because I didn't figure it was very appropriate and I didn't want to take up time with something that, like, you know, I couldn't, I don't think that anybody would get anything from if that makes sense. Um, I mean, really, all he could say was, like, I'm very excited with the direction of it. You can't really say much more than that without giving away if his character dies. So I took the time with other stuff. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. I apologize if it's not exactly what you thought it would be if you're coming from social media. Um, but just thank you for listening and watching. And thanks to all of my subscribers who have been here forever. And uh, Sam, I know you're watching this. Samuel, I know you're watching this. Thank you. And just uh, thank, thank you everyone. I genuinely appreciate it and I'm still editing my Into the Badlands reaction. <laughs> I apologize it's not been out. I had other stuff going on but I'm like halfway through editing and that should be up in like a Monday-ish time frame. Sunday, Monday. I'm working on it, I promise. And gonna get uh, my button gear with other reactions. I've just had a lot of stuff to do around the house and just in life but um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and like always, think positive thoughts, and send positive vibes. Bye guys.